Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 10th of June 2019 and the time has just gone 11.55 British Summer Time. Uh, it's been largely speaking a fairly positive start to the European session. Uh, a number of factors are coming to play here and essentially um, trade tensions, global trade tensions have cooled a little uh, and that has helped extra markets push on uh, from the fairly strong finish they had at the back end of last week. Uh, so starting off with the kind of most important one, um, over the, we've heard from Steve Mnuchin, uh, the US Treasury Secretary, who stated that President Trump isn't going to make a decision uh, in relation to the increase of Chinese tariffs uh, until um, President Trump meets the, the, the Chinese le leader later this month. So it would appear um, but for the time being, things are going to tick along as they are in, in relation to U.S.-China trade. Uh, obviously, that can change. But for the time being, uh, it seems that things are kind of are, are at, a, at a bit of a standstill in relation to U.S.-China trade. And we have seen in, in recent weeks and months, whenever there's no negative news, we've often seen traders um, um, enter, you know, buy back into the market, and that's precisely what we're seeing. Speaking of uh, of trade, uh, we've heard over the weekend that the U.S. Uh, isn't going to press ahead with an increase uh, by, by imposing tariffs on imports from Mexico. Um, it's not really a massive surprise. Um, it, was quite, it was quite clear that uh, the, the threat of tariffs uh, on Mexican imports was largely to do, was basically exclusively to do with uh, border security. Um, Mexico have stepped up their border security in relation to the, US, the Mexican US border uh, and the US government uh, quote of full confidence. Uh, in the Mexican government's ability to kind of you know, maintain a higher level of security, um, so they're the kind of the really kind of uh, the big issues in relation to kind of global trade being being uh, eased. Um, we had have some economic indicators out of China overnight. To be honest, um, there's, there's some good news in there. There's some bad news in there. Um, starting off with the bad news, Chinese exports, uh, you know, in, in U.S. dollar terms, declined. Sorry, the Chinese imports imports. Uh, in U.S. dollars, in, in U.S. dollars terms, uh, declined by 8.5 percent, which really does kind of highlight um, decline demand uh, in the second largest economy in the world. But on the bright side, uh, exports actually increased uh, by 1.1 percent, which isn't huge, but it was a decent enough rebound in comparison with the decline of 2.7 percent in the previous reading. So a bit of a mixed picture there. It shows that exports are still rising despite the fact that there are tariffs on their goods. But the, but the fairly sizable decline in Chinese imports paints a picture that demand is declining. And keep in mind, China's economy has been, has been, has been cooling uh, for, the, for the last decade or so. So this kind of adds further weight to the argument um, that China probably, they probably can, ha they can handle a trade spat with the U.S., but they probably don't really, don't, really don't want one. Um, so they're the kind, of the, the, the kind of the big stories of the last, uh, say, couple of days. Taking a look at uh, European equity markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. Uh, this is fairly common uh, kind of across the board. How we had a fairly sizable move from late December um, up and up until April. Um, but, uh, so we hit multi-month highs in April, but, but notice how we had a, a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. But so, which you know could be could be the sign of a downward trend. But Notice how the, the markets pushed on higher here, managed to move above the 50-day moving average. In fact, managed to actually take out the recent uh, kind of mid-May high here. So this could be the sign uh, if you can hold above these levels and predict if you can hold above the 50-day moving average at 73.39. If you can hold above these levels and build on it, it could be a sign that we're kind of over the we're over we're going we're gonna to fully recoup the ground that we lost between um, between late April. Um, and early June. So this could be a sign that we're actually going to recover all the ground. If you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at retargeting this area here in around the 7,460 mark. And if you press on higher beyond that, we could be looking at retesting uh, the late April high of in around 7,520, 30-ish. And then if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around 7,558. Uh, but if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again and have a sharp move to the downside, we could be looking at heading back down towards this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes into play at 72.21. I 
Now we can see that on a few occasions recently that we saw some consolidation in that area and we saw a clear example of support coming to play here. Uh, so the metric has acted as support in the past, which makes it uh, more likely that it will do so in the near term. Uh, but if the area to keep an eye out for to be really worried about is this area here, uh, the early June low in around 7,079. If, if a size would break below that, that would be a kind of you know a that would be a, another lower low and a multi-year multi-month low, and that could point to further losses potentially down to the psychologically important 7,000. I take a look now at what's going on over in the U.S. Starting off with the the Dow Jones. So a similar situation uh, whereby the, the U.S. market uh, between January, between late December and uh, and April had a, quite an impressive run. Quite a bit of ground has been given up uh, between late April and early June. But similar similar situation to the FTSE 100, whereby the rally here. Um, in this case, it's actually come to be above its 50-day uh, moving average, and the highs here have taken off the highs of kind of you know, mid-May. And so, it's looking, we, we, you know, if you can hold above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which basically comes into play at the psychologically important 26,000 mark, if you can hold above that, it's looking likely we could press on higher from here and try to get this this region here in around 26,400. And if you go beyond that, we're going to be looking, heading up towards the 26,700 mark here. So we've already recouped quite a bit of the ground, which is which suggests that we are going to kind of continue to press on higher from here. But if we do manage to actually turn over ourselves yet again, we could be looking at falling back to this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes into play in around 25,750. Um, the metric acts as both support and resistance on a few occasions um, in the last few weeks, of, in the last few weeks, so it makes it more likely that that will be of importance in the near term. And even if you um, uh, push below that, support could be found from uh, this, this uh, trend line here. <clears throat> you can notice how it acted as both um, resistance and also support at the beginning of the, the, beginning of the year. It sort of acted as support um, in, in mid-May, so that trend line comes into play in around the kind of 24, 25,500-ish mark. Uh, so that region might act as support. And then you also keep in mind, we're not too far away from the 200 moving average, this red line here in at 25,415. So that general area might act as support should we see a move to the downside. Take a look now at what's going on with the S&P 500. It's a similar situation whereby um, after a very impressive rally between late December and early um, and early May, the market has managed to give up managed to give up a fair, a fair bit of ground, but we have recouped a sizable amount of those losses. Uh, so the ground that was lost between May and uh, well, basically the, the month, basically early May to early June, a good portion of it has been has been recouped. Like with the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 is back above its 50-day moving average. The S&P 50-day moving average comes into play at 28.71. We're not. We're pretty much trading at uh, the mid-May high of in around um, 2,884.85. If you can hold above these levels and if you can kind of press on higher a bit from here, it's likely we could be targeting in around the kind of um, 2,920 mark, but a consolidation in around here. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting um, 2,958. If you do have a, a move to the downside, support could be found from this yellow line here, which is the 100 moving average, and that comes into play in a 28.15. And if you even move below that, it could be found from the kind of psychologically important 2,800, sorry, 2,800 mark. And once again, um, the, the trend line, um, which goes back from quite a while, this trend line goes stretches all the way back to the lows of February 2016 through November 2016. This particular trend line acted as both support and resistance at the back end of last year and also early as relevant in early 2019. So that's trend line, which comes into play in around the 2,785 mark. These are all potential areas for support should we have a move to the downside. Uh, take a look now at what's going on in gold. So gold has had a major rally uh, between, basically essentially between late May um, until now. 
We've had a major move to the upside in gold. It's almost, you know, in a straight line, which isn't, which usually doesn't last very long. You know, if the markets, um, if they have a, have a sharp move in one direction, uh, it's difficult for that to be sustained over over a period of time. So we might have a bit of a pullback, considering how much ground we managed to kind of how much ground we managed to make in such a, a short space of time. So you notice here how uh, on Friday that the market managed to actually hit a level um, not seen since since April last year. So talking about uh, the highest level in over a in well in just just in over a year, about a 13, 14 month high. It didn't actually hold up at that level though. Um, and notice how the market is a bit lower today because we're we're in more of a the US dollar has bounced back and we're in more of a risk on attitude. So the market, so the gold market, uh, is, is given a bit of ground. If we continue to drift lower from here, support could be found from the from this region here in around um, 1,324, maybe down in you know, 1,320, or perhaps even as low as this area here in around 1,310. Um, given the how steep this risk rally is, it's possible that the, the kind of the upward move could continue, but it might continue at a at a less steep rate and a less quick rate. So. We might, see a bit of, we might see a bit of a move to the downside, back down towards 1,300, uh, and then potentially look to actually push on higher again. Continue the wider upper trend, but at a, at a kind of a, at a at a more um, at a less quick pace. So, if you're going to head back up here, we could be looking at retesting 1,346, and if you go beyond that, keep an eye for 1,366 uh, levels that was last seen in in around uh, April 2018. Uh, it's only really if you kind of take out 1300 because then we actually look to actually kind of have a fairly kind of size and move to the downside and if that is the case support could be found from this blue line here the 50 moving average which comes into play in around 1290 turning our attention now to the oil market starting off with Brent crude So the oil market, similar to equities, had a massive rally between late December and um, and late April, and then since then we've had you know a fairly fairly sizable um, move, to the, a fairly sizable pullback. So we have the lower low, the lower high, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and, and the uh, market has rebounded again. But if you could hold above this area here, in around sixty dollars a barrel. Uh, if you can hold above that level, it's, it's, it's possible that we could actually look to kind of push higher, push on higher yet again. Uh, now, the kind of a factor behind the sell-off in gold was concerns about tr about uh, global trade. Those tensions appear to have have, uh, have uh, melted away somewhat for now. And should kind of traders become less fearful about global trade, we might see uh, a rebound in oil. And should should we press on higher from here, we could be looking looking at heading up towards this area here in around where. In around the kind of sixty-eight dollar mark, when we're not too far away from the one hundred moving average unit at sixty-seven spot sixty-four, and the two hundred moving average comes into play in around sixty-eight spot fifty-two. So in around sixty-eight dollars per barrel there thereabouts. Um, if, but if you do manage to actually turn over lower on itself again, uh, keep an eye out for the psychology important sixty bucks a barrel per um, sixty bucks per barrel. And if you have a break below that, uh, we could be looking heading down toward this area here in around at 57 spot 50. There's a few occasions that acted as a um, consolidation, so it's likely that it could be important in the near term. In terms of price action wise, it's a fairly similar situation on WTI, whereby it's had a major rally between the, the end of 2018 and, and, uh, and April this year. But we had had a fairly sizable sell off, but notice how when the market did manage to sell off. Didn't really, didn't really take out um, the early, okay, the mid January lows of 50 spot 36. We managed to just about hold above that. So if you could hold above that metric, we could look at heading back up toward this area here in around $56 a barrel. We can see on a few occasions that there's a quite, a quite a bit of consolidation in that area. So keep an eye out for $56 a barrel. And if you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around the uh, psychology important 60 bucks per barrel. And so really, if you take off the recent lows um, in around uh, 50 spot 54, or maybe down to uh, 50 spot 36, it's only really if you take off those lows, could we, look, could we look to head back down towards $48 a barrel, or potentially this area here in around at $47 per barrel. Take a look now at some currencies, euro versus the US dollar. 
So euro dollar was in a fairly clear and obvious downward trend uh, for quite a few months. There was decent support coming to play in around that one spot 11.10 area, but the market has managed to kind of press on higher. A uh, combination of the, the, the European Central Bank last week weren't as dovish as some traders expecting that they were, and more recently, uh, the Federal Reserve uh, have given some indication that they're open to the idea of interest rate cost towards the back end of this year, and 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 um, and bond markets have really gone with that. So got a lot of pressure they put on the dollar, so that's where we're seeing this size of a bounce back in the euro versus the dollar. If you can hold above the kind of the 113 area, uh, it's likely you could press on higher from here. Keep an eye out for the eternity moving average, this red line here, which comes into play in around 1, 113.62-ish. And if you go beyond that, keep an eye out for the mid-March high of in around 1 spot, 14.48. And as only, if you do have managed to have, have a down, uh, if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, support could be found from this area here in around 1 spot, 12. And as far as the charts goes, the last one to look at, the pound versus the US dollar. So pound sterling has obviously been in a very good example of a downward trend uh, in the last couple of months. Um, things are still looking relatively relatively um, bearish on the pound sterling. But if you could hold above the recent lows in at one spot 25.59, it's likely that we could see a, you know, a continuation of the recent rebound. And uh, if we can press on higher from here, we could be looking at tracking this area here in at one spot 28. And if we go beyond that, we can head up, up towards the 30 moving average, the, this red line here, in at one spot 29.45, or up as high as one spot 30. But if we do manage to take out the recent lows here, we could be looking at targeting heading back down towards this region in at one spot 24.76. If you are going to be trading cable, please keep an eye out for uh, keep an eye on, on, on UK politics. Uh, Theresa May is no longer the Conservative Party leader. Uh, so the, the, the Tory leadership race is, is on. And depending on which candidates are, are putting their hat into the ring and which are looking likely to succeed, that's going to drive the British pound around. And essentially, everyone is going to be looking at, at the particular candidates, policy and Brexit. Are they more on the Remain side or a soft Brexit, which would be likely to be less... Which uh, Put it this way, any candidate that is uh, advocating a hard Brexit and it's looking likely that they're going to do... They're going to um, uh, secede... Uh, succeed Prime Minister Mrs May, that's likely to have a negative impact um, on, the, on the pound, so keep an eye out for starting volatility in relation to the um, Tory leadership. Uh, to qu quickly taking a look at, at the week ahead, uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under, under news and analysis, you'll, you'll find a good portion of the articles that we do on a daily basis. So scroll down here, uh, looking ahead, to, to tomorrow, we have UK unemployment and wage data. Uh, Press Nicholson, the uh, the house building company, have first half figures of tomorrow. On Thursday, the Swiss National Bank have their interest rate decision. On Thursday, we have first quarter figures from Tesco. Uh, on Thursday, we have full year figures from Majestic Wine. We have second quarter numbers from Broadcom. Uh, on Friday, we have Chinese retail sales and industrial production. Uh, and, and lastly, on, on Friday, we also have U.S. retail sales. Uh, finally, before I go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.